Fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. I was waiting on the trail ahead. The territorial prison was only a few years old, well built and strongly guarded. No one had ever escaped from its high stone walls, although several men had been killed in desperate and fruitless attempts. This knowledge was in Lew Russell's mind as he and Pete, another prisoner, were being led across the yard by an armed and surly guard. Keep moving, you two. This ain't no picnic. Russell glanced up at a dark and overcast sky and spoke to his companion in the tight-lipped undertone that is common to prisoners the world over. Storm blowing up. That'll help. Yeah. Remember now, there'll be a jar of Mexican pottery in the corner of the room. The guns are in that. You shove me. I got you. Cut the gap. You hombres asked to see the warden. The only talking you'll do is to him. Oh. Open up, Bill. What's this? Warden's orders. They asked to see him. All right. Who is it? Cell guard and two prisoners. Hmm. You men want them to see me? All right. What is it? Well, Warden, you, you see, we figured... Make that it we... short. I haven't time to listen to a long story. My partner and I have been cellmates for three months. No, and... no, Lou, you got it wrong. It's uh, like this. <laughs> you clumsy convicts. Oh, gee, I... I broke in that jar. Get up, Russell. Oh, I don't know what to say. God, use the lash. Stand up, you. Here, I'll stand up. He's got a gun. And I can use it. Keep your hands up, both of you. Nice work, Lou. Now get this and get it straight. The four of us are going to walk out of here, see? You won't get away with it, Russell. Yes, I will. You and this whip swinger go first. Pete and I'll be right behind you. When we get to the outer gate, tell the guard to open it up. Understand? Yes, but get you on. can. Start talking, Warden. I, uh, unlock this door, Bill, and walk across the yard with us. Yes, sir. These men are... And there's some government officers waiting for them outside the gate. Open it up. Yes, sir. Guess we ought to thank you, Warden, for everything you've done. Uh, yes, I... Say, what's wrong here? Use your gun. These men are escaping. Run for feet. Don't take any No, you don't, Bob. Hey. Over this way, Pete. The horses are here. I think I'll wing one of them guards. I hope it's the one with the whip. 
care of horses. Come on. I'd like to stick around and plug one of them for We haven't time for that. Let's ride. Get up Come on, boy. Get up there. A few minutes later, and not far from the stone prison, a masked man and his Indian friend were resting their horses in a small grove of trees. That sounded like gunfire, Tonto. Ah, uh, maybe men hunt. There's no hunting in that direction. It might be a... Somebody's headed this way. We'll stay out of sight. Ah. Uh. Oh, 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 steady there. I think we've lost him, Pete. Sure we have. Those guards can't hit anything they can't reach with a whip. Then this is where I'll turn north. North? Where to? A little town called Classen. Why go back there? It's the nearest thing I've got to home. Oh, now, Lou, don't be loco. You were the best sheriff that town ever had. What did they do for you? Not much. They railroaded you into the pen on a fake charge of cattle rustling. Is that your idea, not much? That's why I'm going back. I gotta prove I was framed. Don't forget you're not a free citizen now, son. You're an escaped convict. Oh, let's head out west and start clean. No, Pete, I, I'm going back to Classen. Are you crazy? Maybe. Well, then, I guess this is where we, where we say so long. How do you figure? You're going out west, aren't you? Listen, you sidewinder, I can't be put off that easy. You're loco enough to go back to Classen? Well, I'm loco, too. Thanks, Pete. What are we waiting for? Let's hightail it. Get up there. Get along. Come on, get up. Come on. Hello. Those men have just broken out of prison. You think they speak truth? I don't know. These men not go away. That's what puzzles me. Could leave the country and be free. Yet one of them insists upon going back to the town where he was convicted of a crime. Me not savvy. Neither do I. But anyone who will gamble freedom against prison to prove he's right may need help. Ah. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. Steady, big fella. <laughs> Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. Where we go now? Same trail they're on, to class him. Ah. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The little town of Classen nestled snugly at the north end of Blue River Valley. In many respects, it was similar to other towns of the range country. The single exception was a large wooden building on one side of Main Street. This was the courthouse, the seat of justice in Classen County. It contained the room in which only a year ago a jury of angry ranchers had demanded that Sheriff Russell forfeit his badge. Attorney Dan Cummings had defended Russell at that time. And now, although it was well past midnight, he nervously paced the floor of his small office. I should have heard something by this time. Maybe. Who is it? John Carter. Oh, just a minute. I was just heading for home when I got your message. What is it you want, Cummings? Oh, come in, John. Come in. Sit down. Have much time, Dan. Ethel's going to meet me at the livery stable. She's driving in from the ranch. Uh, what I have to say won't take long. Glad you mentioned Ethel. I'm thinking about her. I guess you've been thinking about my daughter for several years, Dan. Is that what you want to say? She's still in love with Lou Russell, isn't she? Won't consider me as long as he's in jail. It might be that way. Well, Lou's getting out of jail. He's probably on his way here now. What? Well, Lou Russell was sentenced to five years. I arranged the jailbreak. Should be here tonight. What's the idea? I'm Lou's friend, and we're both in love with Ethel. My only interest is her happiness. If she wants Lou, I'll give him to her. Well, I'll be darned. I've heard of things like this, but I never saw it happen before. You'll tell Ethel? Sure, sure I will. Uh, by the way, Dan, there's something I'd like to ask you. Yes? This Murdoch fellow who holds a mortgage on my ranch. I want to talk to him. Murdoch? Well, he's very seldom in town. You're his lawyer, aren't you? Why do you want to see him? Curiosity, for one thing. Here's a man who holds a mortgage on most every ranch in the valley. And yet nobody but you has ever seen him. Well, Mr. Murdoch doesn't like people. I handle all his business. I hear he's kind of a queer critter. Wears a big black beard and dark glasses. That's right. Another thing, I've got to have an extension on that mortgage. That cattle rustling last year put me way behind. I'll talk to Mr. Murdoch. Uh, sure would appreciate it. I'll talk to Murdoch and uh, you talk to Ethel. Fair enough. Good night, Dan. Good night, Carter. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, this is Classen, Tonto. We'll wait here by the courthouse until we 
see what those two men do. They stop by Lawman's place. I think it's a lawyer's office. We follow him? No. As long as the street's dark, it's best to wait here and see what happens. Who is it? Lou. Lou Rosen. Lou, you made it. I'm glad to see you. Yeah, we made it all right. This is Pete, Dan. Glad to know you, Pete. How are you? Do you have any trouble? With the guns planted in the warden's office? Everything lined up just like we planned it. Oh, the guards. Did you have to? No, no, we didn't kill anybody. Oh, I'm glad of that. But it isn't over yet, Lou. They'll be after you. I know it. That's why I have to work fast. Work? Prove that I was framed into that stretch. Isn't that why I busted out of jail? Yes, of course, but it'll take time. No, it won't. The first person I want to see is an hombre who showed up here just after I left. Who's that? I hear he wears a black beard, dark glasses, and goes by the name of Murdoch. Murdoch? Who told you about him? I did. Law didn't get around to picking me up till about a month after they framed Lou. I saw this Murdoch hombre a couple of times. Not up close. Who is he, Dan? Well, Murdoch's just a man who came in here from the east and bought up some spreads. Yeah. Bought them up after the ranchers went broke on account of the rustling they blamed on Lou. Well, there's no law against buying property. Ain't it kind of funny this Murdoch got so many bargains? Oh, he's, a, he's a shrewd businessman. I handled some of the deals for him. Then you know him? Yes, fairly well. But I don't think he'll be able to help you very much. Well, I want to talk to him anyway. Where can I find him? Well, Lou, why don't you and Pete forget all this and head out west somewhere? You can start clean. That isn't the reason I busted out of jail, Dan. I respect the law and what it means. I'm going right back to that jail just as soon as I clear up this mess. Uh, Ethel knows about your break. I told her father earlier this evening. I'm grateful for everything you've done, Dan. But right now, I want to find this Murdoch. Where is he? Well, he may not be in town. Then we'll tell him. Come on, Pete. Now, wait, wait. I'll try to find him. He may be at the hotel or the bar. Now, it wouldn't be good for you to show yourself in either of those places. I'll chance it. I'm sure if I find him, I'll find out who was behind my frame-up. All right, Lou. You're bound to talk to Murdoch. I'll bring him here to the office. Good. But hurry it up, Dan. Like as not, there's a posse on my trail right this minute. Yes, I'll be right back. Say, Lou, are you real sure of this fellow Cummings? What do you mean? Well, didn't he say he handled some deals for Murdoch? Well, you're crazy. Dan Cummings is the best friend I've got. Maybe. We wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for Dan. Well, don't get riled. I was just thinking. That's all. <laughs> I hardly believe it, Father. Why would Dan Cummings help Lou Russell to break out of jail? Because he's in love with you. That doesn't make sense. I'm going to stop at Dan's office right now. Now, now, Ethel, you better leave well enough alone. Whoa, boys, whoa, whoa. Lou's really here. I'm going to see him. Uh, wait a minute, Ethel. See that man across the street? Yes. I think that's Mr. Murdoch, and I want to talk to him. All right. You do that while I go into Dan's office. Murdoch! Oh, Murdoch! That's funny. He's looking right at me, but... Murdoch! Who's that? Lou! Ethel! Mr. Carter! Hello, Lou! I thought I heard someone call Murdoch. Well, he's standing right over there, but he won't answer me. I want to see him, too. Is that you, Murdoch? Listen, Watch you... out, Lou. He's got a gun. So have I. Stop the team. I can't hold it. There's more than one of them, Lou. Over on your left. Look out! There's too many people, the horses. Come on, this way. Well, keep going, Lou. I don't think... Oh, Pete! Run for it, Lou. I, I can't. That gunfight has roused the whole town. Look, man runs his way. Yes, one of the men we trailed. And he's wounded, Tonto. Help him. Put him on your horse and meet me along the river south of town. Huh? Where you go? I'll catch that runaway team. Come on, Silver! Help, Silver! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Ethel Carter's team of young ponies were badly frightened by the gunfire. They raced headlong down the river road with a light buckboard careening behind them. 
Ethel and her father clung desperately to the wagon. What can we do? Nothing but hope. If I could only the get... The down at the bend. We'll never make it. But at that same instant, not far behind the runaway team, who was lunging through the night with ever-increasing speed, the Lone Ranger was urging his great white stallion forward. Come on, Silver. Come on, boy. Slowly but surely, the masked man and Silver drew alongside the team of wild and frightened ponies and the straining, tossing buckboard to which John Carter and his daughter clung precariously. They held on tightly, although they knew that at any moment the light wagon would be smashed into a million pieces. Help! As he drew abreast of the racing team, the Lone Ranger paused for just a moment, then leaped to the plunging back of one of the ponies. Whoa, boy, whoa, steady, back, whoa, whoa! His firm and steady hand brought the horses to a standstill. There now, boys, it's all over. Everything's all right. Never saw such riding in my life, you saved our lives. A oh, hundred yards and we would have hit the bridge. Steady. They'll be all right now, after they rest a few minutes. I, I don't know how to thank you, stranger. Thanks aren't necessary. I'm glad I could help. But at least you let me... Mask. You're wearing a mask. A masked man and a white horse. An outlaw. It was you who fired those shots at Lou. No, I didn't fire the shots. But I saw everything that happened. I don't understand it. I think I do, Father. Will you answer some questions? If we can. The name of the man who walked out of the lawyer's office uh, just before the shooting is... Lou Russell. He used to be the sheriff here, but... He was convicted of cattle wrestling and sent to the penitentiary. He escaped from there this afternoon. Why, uh, how did you know all that? Uh, who's Mr. Murdoch? He's the one who started that gunfight. Uh, I guess it was him. I don't rightly know. You've never seen him? Only from a distance, like tonight. He's a queer-looking bird. Dark glasses and black beard. Thanks. Here, Silver. Hey, big fella. <laughs> I think your pony is arrested now. He'll be gentle, too, after that long run. Lou, I just remembered. Maybe he was no, killed. No, he wasn't killed. He may be badly hurt. Let's drive back to town, Father, as quick as we can. You might not find him there. And if you don't, I can assure you he'll get the best of care. But how will we know? I'll let you know just as soon as I can. Come on, Silver. Now, who do you suppose... I'm awfully mixed up about a lot of things that have happened tonight. But I'm sure of one thing. What's that? That man we just talked to. He saved our lives and he rides a white horse named Silver. Well, There's only one answer. He's the Lone Ranger. Whoa, Silver, whoa, whoa, steady, big fella. Hello, hello, where are you? Uh, Tonto, come here. Now, where's Lou Russell, the man who was hurt? You bring him here? Ah, uh, Tonto, bring him. Tonto, fix wound. Him sleep now. Where? Under Cottonwood. There. Oh, how is he, Tonto? Him pulled through all right. Good. All we have to do now is find out what's back of all this. Ah. The other man who was with Russell, where is he? Him dead. Oh, it's too bad. After shooting stop, how to hear people in town talk. What did they say? Do they know what caused it? Everybody talk plenty much. Then lawyer friend of Russell say him see mask man right way. Him say you shoot. So Russell's lawyer thinks I did the shooting. Ah. How about Murdoch? Who you mean? Man with dark glasses and a heavy beard. May not see him. Oh, I thought I might have the solution to this. If Russell's lawyer was there, I'm wrong. Uh, what we do now? We're going to ride, Tonto. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. Steady, big boy. Tonto, you ride to the ranch house of the girl who was driving the runaway wagon. I think her name is Carter. Tonto Lou Russell is all right. Uh. I think you can leave him here safely. And um, where you go? I'm going to find out something about the man named Murdoch. Meet me back here, Kimosabe. Uh. Come on, Silver. Hello, hello. Where can you be? He's an Indian. He was here, but he's gone now. Well, you're up. You must feel much better. Outside of a crease in my scalp and a left arm that's not much good. Who are you? Tonto and I picked you up after the gun battle and uh, brought you here. Oh, then it's you I have to thank. Well, how about Pete? Where's he? I guess you mean your partner. He's killed. Pete? Dead? Why? Do you have any idea who Murdoch is? That's the hombre who started blasting me. I never saw him before. Very strange. I can't find a trace of him. You can't? Well, now, say, mister, but before you do any more for me, maybe you better know that I'm an escaped convict. I know all about it. I've also investigated the charges that sent you to jail. The evidence was all circumstantial. Yeah, letters from people I didn't know who were supposed to be buying stolen cattle from me. What's your lawyer's name, Lou? Cummings. Dan Cummings. He's about the best friend I've got. He arranged the jailbreak. Oh, he did. And the young lady, Miss Carter. Well, Ethel didn't know about it. 
I only saw her a second before the shooting started. Oh, tell me, is your friend Dan Cummings by any chance in love with Miss Carter, too? Dan and Ethel? Oh, well, I guess maybe he used to be kind of crazy about her, but, well, when we got engaged, Dan forgot it. I see. And Dan's the one who helped me. Oh, Scott, oh, fellow. Hello. Hello. Oh. Time to bring plenty news. What is it, Kimosabe? Crowd and class and big. Everybody talk. Lawmen make posse. You mean they're after us? Ah. Uh, wagon the runway, come in town. Carter man strapped to seat dead. Norton wagon, say girl kidnap. We'll bring her back when Lawman catch Russell and Mask Man. Ethel's father murdered, and she's been kidnapped. Uh. It's that Murdoch. It must be. He's doing this because I got away, and you helped me. It looks that way. But why would he murder John Carter? I don't know. Unless Carter got close enough to recognize Murdoch. What do you mean? Maybe nothing. You're familiar with this country around here, aren't you, Russell? Like the palm of my hand. Have you any idea where a kidnapper would choose a hideout? Well, there's several spots. Come on, we'll ride double on Silver. We can stop at the Carter Ranch and pick up a horse for you. Right. Here, Silver. Steady, boy, steady. Come on, Lou. First to the Carter Ranch, Tonto. Uh -huh. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. After securing a mount for Lou Russell, the three horsemen spent hours scouring the hills in broken country for trace of the man who kidnapped Ethel Carter. Finally... How much further is it to the old mine? Just around the end of the trail here. There it is. You can see the old tools here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Looks like we're headed at last. I think you're right. Stay back. He can't hit us if we don't go any further. Let me line a gun sight on that old wreck. No, we can't risk shooting at the shack. The girl may be inside. Yes, that's right. Hello. Uh -huh. Can you climb up one of these drawers and circle back of him? Uh -huh. Now, if we can keep him interested by shooting in front of the place. Well, that's simple. That's it, Lou. Another one ought to give Tano time to get there. Don't seem like he's going to make it. Hey, you! Tano's got him. He's coming out of the shack with his hands up. Come on. Ethel, is she all right? Really inside. Me hold gun on outlaw. Good work, Tano. I'll see if Ethel's all right. You outlaws ain't going to get away with this. That's very funny, coming from a kidnapper. The boss will take care of you, and I'll... Better keep those hands up. All right. So you beat me to the draw. Throw down that gun. Throw it down. Keep him covered, Tonto. Uh -huh. Who is he, do you know? No, Tonto not known. Here's Ethel. She's not hurt. Oh, I knew you'd come. I prayed you would. Glad you're safe, Miss Carter. Lou, uh, who is this man? Do you know him? Sure, I know him. It's Squint Davis, livery man down at the barn. This job isn't his idea. Who's your boss, Squint? I ain't talking. There are ways to make you talk. I don't think they'll be necessary. Miss Carter. Yes? Your father was killed when you were kidnapped, wasn't he? Yes, he... he was murdered. Did you recognize the man? I... I don't think so. You see, our wagon was attacked from the rear. Naturally, you couldn't see anyone. But I think we have a good enough case to take to the sheriff. Maybe he can make Squint talk. That's where you're barking up the wrong tree. Oh, do you think so? Yeah, because the boss has already got warrants worn out for you three critters. And the sheriff does what the boss says. I think it's time to go to Classen and find out who the boss really is. You manage him, Tonto? Uh, uh, uh. With gun and back him right good. You and Ethel can use your horse, Lou. Sure. Come on, then. There's no time to lose. Quiet. Quiet, please. Be quiet. Let the sheriff talk. All I want you men to do is listen to lawyer Dan Cummings. Go ahead, Dan. <clears throat> now, the sheriff has sworn you all in as deputies... And I'm sure we'll run down the outlaws that have been doing all the murdering and kidnapping around here. That's just what we want to hear. Sir. I want to tell you one more thing. Mr. Murdoch, one of our wealthiest citizens, has authorized me to say that he'll personally pay a $500 bounty on each of the three crooks. Lou Russell, an escaped convict, a masked man who rides a white horse, and an Indian. How does that sound? <laughs> Uh, just one thing I'd like to know, Dan Cummings. All right, what is it? Who is this Mr. Murdoch? We've heard about him, but nobody's ever seen him. Hey, right. Mr. Murdoch is very retiring. As a matter of fact, he's sitting over in my office right now. Well, tell him to come over and show himself. Make that bounty offer in person. Hey, Dan, Better go over and get him, Dan. You know how I'll try to get set in my own idea. Yeah, yeah, maybe it would be better. I'll, I'll be right back. It's the first time I ever heard of men arguing about who was going to pay bounty money. What do you care? We just want to see Mr. Murdoch, that's all. Ain't that right, boy? Yeah. All right, all right. Here he comes now. He has got a black beard at that. <clears throat> Fellow citizens, I can assure you that everything my attorney, Dan Cummings, has told you is the truth. 
Help me. Just a minute. Oh, Silver City Boy. Oh. If that outlaw's got nerve enough to show up here, I'll... Don't draw, Sheriff. I've got you covered. You haven't got me. Hey. Oh, my hand. Your hand isn't hurt. Shut the gun right out of his hand. Don't anyone else try to slap leather. I want to show all of you something. Come here, Mr. Murdoch. Oh, now you can't... Come here. Pay close attention, everybody. Here you have Mr. Murdoch, a man who pays 500 for outlaw bounties. And here you have Mr. Dan Cummings, a thief, a murderer, and a man who betrayed his best friend. Yes, he's a man who was behind the cattle rustling last year. He's a man who framed Sheriff Lou Russell, the man who murdered John Carter, kidnapped his daughter. Let's string him up! No, no, wait! No! We'll turn him over to the sheriff, and the law will take its course. You can handle him, can't you, Sheriff? Otto has another prisoner for you, too. I'll handle the sidewinders all right. And I'm sure if you ask the governor for a pardon for Lou Russell, you'd get it. Sure I will. Well, I guess you and Miss Carter have some plans, haven't you, Lou? I'll say we have. And I think our job is done, Tonto. Uh. Steady, Silver. Let's ride, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Who did you say he was, Ethel? The Lone Ranger. Well, I didn't know him by that name, but he's sure a real man. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>